Hey guys, before we get started on today's video, I want to address a lot of the comments and questions that we get about me not being a licensed electrician, but here I am doing electrical work. So I wanted to give you the what's up with this project and kind of how we work with my electrician. So Jordan and I installed 15 of these single gang junction boxes in the attic to lift the old circuits into the attic to get ready for our new work here in the kitchen. Now that was over two or three days. And if I called my electrician every time I needed one of these done, he's gonna laugh at me and he's gonna say, look, we've worked together before. I know you can do it. Just terminate those in the attic like you've always done for me. You're gonna put the circuit number on the box. It's more than we ever get from anybody else. And my guys know when they get to your job site, they're not gonna have to spend a whole day being a detective on the electrical side. They can just start running wire. And here's the thing, gang. My electrician knows my background. He trusts the way I do things and I trust the way he does things. We have a good relationship that we've built these last few years. And he knows when he comes to my job site, like I said, it's going to be easy for them. We've been getting a lot of comments after the last two electrical videos we did, the refrigerator shock video and the shared neutral video. Please show more electric. Please show more electric. I've been hesitant, but we're going to show you a day of electrical the way Studpack does it. This is not a DIY video. It's not a how-to video. It's not even an instructional video. So we're going to show you how we do it today, and we hope you enjoy it. Hey gang, welcome back to our channel. I'm Paul with Studpack. In our previous video, you saw Jordan and I remove all the popcorn from this side of the house. It's all gone. There's no more in this house. The owners love it. You also saw us do a little bit of electrical in this wall. We didn't go into too deep of a dive on that because we want to go into a deep dive on this video. Now, when you get to the point in your project where we are in ours, you're going to be left with a lot of this. There's wires that aren't where they're supposed to be. So where does this one need to be? It needs to be above the framing, but we've got others that need to be in a junction box. We've got some that need to be wired to a switch and we've got some wires that need to come out all the way back to the panel. And we're going to show you all of that in this video. Let's start with this one right here. So during our demolition, this wire was above the eight foot ceiling and it's coming from this receptacle right here. We can actually see it coming down the wall, staple to this stud coming into this box. And we've already got the circuit turned off. You can tell by the tester there and we know which one it is because during demo we labeled every wire. We actually did a whole video about that. If you'd like, pause this video. We'll put a link right here to that video. Go check it out in a new tab and come back and finish watching this video. So like I said, this wire is coming from that receptacle. It's feeding this one down here, right? It's going into the top plate, feeding that receptacle. This one is what we call downstream of that receptacle and this coil of wire was going across the ceiling into this old load bearing wall that was here feeding another receptacle so we pulled that wire out we didn't cut it our advice is to always leave the wires as long as you can because you never know what you're going to use them for we coiled it up capped it and labeled it so we're going to take this wire and this one and get them up in the attic but in order to move this cable we have to come over here and pull these staples out of this stud so let me go get that puller and we'll get that done. Now one of these wires is feeding that receptacle and the other one is downstream of that receptacle feeding the next one. I only need to remove the staples from the one that we're gonna move, this one. So I'm gonna come up here and push. That's the one I want. I remove staples by one of two methods. Standard nail puller like that or some offset diagonal cutters. I'll show you both. These offset diagonal cutters work great if you're in a tight spot. You just grab the edge of the staple, push, and it acts like a little crowbar, pulls that thing right out. Let's go down here and I'll show you these. Now with these, I'm just gonna grab the edge, always careful of the cable, pull it straight out. And make sure those go in the trash, they're deadly. So now our wire is not stapled at all. It is ready to be pulled out of this receptacle, but we're not gonna cut it, we're gonna disconnect it. So let me move this stuff and we'll show you that. These old receptacles, when I say old, this was done in 1981, they're 40 years old. They're gonna have a slotted head screw. What does that make you? <laughs> that makes me, uh... <laughs> that... <laughs> what does that make me? That makes me wise. Oh, okay. I can't argue with that. So a modern receptacle, you know, a Phillips screwdriver will work. But on these old ones, it's slotted, and I just use this. That's a Klein, and again, we'll put the link in the description below. There's the model number. This comes in a Phillips also, and they work great. 
something like this. You could use your cordless drill, but that's kind of a small slotted bit. Most people don't have that laying around. So now the receptacle is removed from the box. We've got our ground, two neutrals, and our hots. So we're going to disconnect this. Now, I'm not going to cut the wires because I'd rather have them as long as I can possibly have them. Now, I was taught you always remove the hots first, the neutrals second, and the ground is always the last one to be disconnected. And then when you're reconnecting, the ground is always first, then the neutrals, and then the hot is always the last one to be reconnected. And that's a safety thing. The ground is going to save your life. Leave it connected as long as you can. So this little guy here is a Stanley. What is that, Jordan? 6'6"? Six, six. 116. All right. And that little slotted tip fits perfectly in that slot. It releases the spring that's holding this wire, and you can pull it right out. So let's do all these real quick. All right, so our neutrals and our hots are disconnected. I was taught always just bend them up out of the way, and all we're left with is the ground. You can see they're connected here with this crimp connector. I usually just take my Lyman pliers, Get me one edge of it where I can snip it off. There we go. So see that I cut off one edge of that crimp connector. I didn't have to cut the wire. So there's that one. And I still have the remaining part of that connector on there. Should just pull off. See how short that is? I would never want to cut that. I need all that I can get. Now the ground is the last one to come off. Loosen that screw. Take that off. Now, which is the one we want? This is the one we want. It's just going to make it easier to pull if I straighten all this out, right? So let's do that with our linemans. And now we're ready to pull this wire all the way out and reroute it through our new top plate over there. Let's get it done. All right, I want to drill through the top plate now. I'm going to use a paddle bit or a spade bit. You could also use an auger bit like that. Whatever you have that gets the job done. And give yourself some room. Don't drill a tiny hole that you have to force those through. So now let's untape this one, and then we'll feed both of these through that hole. There's our two cables. We're going to fish them through the top plate now. All right, now we're going to pull all the slack through. There we go. All right, those two are rerouted through our new top plate. Now let's take the one we pulled from over there in the receptacle and reroute it and put it back. All right, gang, we have our cable pulled down here. This is a cable, this is a wire. The cable is multiple wires, wire, cable, got it, got it, good. We have this cable down here. I was gonna reconnect it, but then I noticed, see how short the ground is? I would love to have a little more wire there. And we have some slack in the attic. So I'm just gonna loosen this staple and the one up there and pull a little slack to give me a couple more inches of ground here. I'm just gonna use these. That's all I need. I'm just gonna loosen them. See how I can just tap that and loosen that staple? These work great for that. Now let me hop up there and, and I'll try to feed you a little bit more wire, bud. There, now see that? Wasn't that worth 30 seconds to get more ground wire? So now I'll just remove this sheathing and we'll put this one back and reconnect everything. When you're doing sheathing like this in a box, note that the ground is always in the middle on this two conductor cable. So if the tip of the knife goes through the sheathing, it's just gonna hit the ground. You don't wanna go through the sheathing, you just wanna score it, but if by chance you do happen to go too far with the knife, you're not gonna hurt anything because all that's under it is the ground wire. But you have to go right down the middle. Can't be here or here. So let's get rid of this paper. That one's ready. We'll put this one back. We've got our cable put back in the box. We have all this slack, but instead of cutting it, I'm gonna pull it back and I'm gonna store this in the attic. It goes back to what I said before. Always leave these as long as you can. You never know when you might need it. So that's where I want it. I've got 
sheathing inside the box. And just to hold everything, I'm going to put a staple right here. And now we're going to reconnect this receptacle. We've been using it quite often on the job. So we're going to put it back and then at the end of the project, we'll put a nice new one here. So I always make sure my wires are not twisted and I take the ones I'm not working on and I bend them up like that because I'm going to do the grounds first. Remember what I said earlier? The grounds are the last one to be disconnected, but the first ones to be connected. So I'm going to save the longer one. See this one shorter than this one? I'm going to save this one. I twisted them back here and I'm going to cut off that piece. I'm going to get, grab a grounding wire nut. They're green and they have a hole in them, just like that. That hole is for this wire and that's going to be the wire we connect to the ground screw on our device. And when we twist that on, it's going to make a secure connection between these two ground wires. Let's just go ahead and hook up the receptacle now. I'm going to use my strippers. They come with these holes in them. We're going to bend a little hook. I'm under the ground screw, always clockwise. See how that hook's going around clockwise? Tighten that screw, and the ground is connected. Now, when I do my finish work, I never use the push-in connectors in the back. I call them push and praise. You push them in and pray they hold. I know I'm going to change this in the end, so for right now, I'm just going to put these back. The two whites go on the neutral side of the plug, obviously. That's the silver screw. On this one, it's a little hard to tell, but on a receptacle, the wider slot is always the neutral. See how that one's wider than that one? That's always the neutral side. So one, two, and the neutral side's connected. One, two, now my hot side's connected. I'm gonna tuck these wires in. They're a little long for me right now, but we'll fix all that again when we do our finish electric. This one's all back together. Remember, we're gonna pull this up and staple that properly like it needs to be done. But let's go over here and talk about this other one. This is the one that was feeding that receptacle in that load bearing wall. And we're just gonna terminate it in a junction box in the attic for future use. And remember when I said leave them long? This is a benefit of that. I can make this up right here on the owner's beautiful dining room table. I can make it up in the junction box, and then all I gotta do is go up there and nail it off. So the first thing I'm gonna do, it's circuit 11B. I'm gonna write that on the cover plate for me and future me's, so we'll know what circuit that is. Because I'm about to cut this off of here, and I will probably forget. Now we got plenty of wire to put in the junction box. If we ever need to connect to it, it'll be super easy. I'm gonna punch out one of these knockouts in the back. Just like that. It doesn't matter which one? Nope, they give you four of them. We just have one cable, so it doesn't matter. We'll come on in, cap them. I always like to cap the ground in a situation like this because as I'm folding them and stuffing them in the box, it's possible that if you don't cap it, it could go in there and that would be bad. So just put a wire nut on there, take them and fold them. And now we're ready for whatever purpose this has in the future. We'll coil this up, put some staples in it, nail this off, put the cover plate on and this will be done. All right, here's a little pro tip about taping off a coil of wire or taping off the end of a wire. This is pretty tough. I've got my left hand there to hold the coil together. Now I'm gonna come over here, try to get this started. And then I've gotta put it there and hold it with my left thumb and come around and then try to get it tight. You get the idea, but check this out. I'm gonna get my tape while I have two hands free. I'll make a turn around there. And now after I make my coil, I can just grab that and it's ready to go. Pretty cool, huh? Saves you all that fumbling around. Now this is ready to go up there. I don't want to put it too far back because I want access, but. Mm. 
Yeah, I like that. I put it on this little brace here. That way it's facing out. So if a future me is walking by and they see it, they're more likely to see this than if we're just laying flat somewhere. Yeah, they don't have to dig in insulation or yep. anything. So I'll just put the cover plate on and this one's done. Look at that. That one's done. Let's go turn this circuit on, check our work, and we'll turn the next circuit that we're gonna work on off while we're out there. All right, on this cable right here, it's feeding the receptacle on the front porch, which is being ground fault protected by a bathroom GFCI. That's how they did it back in the 80s. So we didn't wanna go outside in the rain, disconnect that receptacle, remove this drywall and all those staples like we did over there to get this wire out of the wall. And we certainly didn't wanna go into that brand new bathroom and disconnect it there. So we just cut it and we're gonna make it up in a junction box in the attic. So do as much prep work as you can on the ground. I've already removed these. And I've got the cover plate ready to go. 100K LACS. What's, what's an LACS protection? That's very special protection for a receptacle. It means like and consider subscribing. Now this is the one that goes there. Circuit number 15A, and I put GFCI in there just to remind, again, future me's that that circuit is ground fault protected in case they need it for something else. So let's go in the attic and hook up our junction box. We got our box nailed off. I'm gonna strip all these, get them ready. One, two, four. Grab three wire nuts out of my pouch and hook them together. Remember, ground's always first. It's just a good habit to get into. Even though we know this is off, it's a great habit to have. When you're reconnecting something, connect the ground first. Then the neutrals, and I just always like to make sure the ends are even. And when I'm putting two number 14s together, I don't pre-twist. The wire nut's going to do that. With three number 14s, I'll pre-twist. And I always pre-twist 12. And that just means I'm grabbing my linemen and I'm twisting this wire ahead of time. All right, that one's done. Remember, I'm going to come back and staple all this and route it like I like later. I'm just going to staple everything off at once with one trip in the attic. But let me tuck these in. We'll put that cover plate on there and we can turn that circuit back on. Hey gang, wardrobe change. It's actually the next day. Jordan and I were up there last night. Both of our phones went off. We got an alert as a reminder for a surprise party we were supposed to be at in 30 minutes. So we had to clean up, zip across town and make a stud pack appearance. We did, the surprise was great, but we're back here today. We're gonna to keep working on this electrical, but I wanna show you a couple things before we get started. I've always used wire nuts and it's still what I use. This is the brand Ideal Twisters and they're tan. I just buy them by the bag of 500. But here's a little tip a lot of people don't know about them. They're shaped to accept a 5 16 nut driver. I'm just using my Ideal 10 in one tool, just like that. And you can twist them on or untwist them if they're really tight. Honestly, I hardly ever use that feature on them, but where it's good is if you have two wires in a junction box and they're cut short and you can't get your hand in there to start a wire nut, you can start a wire nut this way. Push it in there and get it going. So good tip to know. A lot of you might like these. These are great. I have a whole bag of them. And a lot of you might like the Wago or the Bago, depending on how you pronounce it. All great options. Pick the one you like the most, stick with it. But for right now, we're gonna head back up in the attic and keep working on these circuits. Today we're going to start over here in the corner of the kitchen. This receptacle used to be the only receptacle circuit over here on this wall. It's actually in a metal box. Oh, check that out, Jordan. There's a loose screw in there in a metal box. What are people thinking sometimes? That would be a lot of fireworks if that were on the wrong side of that box. Well, let's go outside and turn that off and I'm going to get in the attic, mask up, get my tools on and get this thing terminated. All right, back in the attic, our favorite spot. Let me show you what we got. This wire is feeding the metal box we showed you downstairs. This other one was feeding the old microwave. And they're both being fed from this wire, which is a home run back to the panel, circuit number six. And they're all made up in this metal box. So it's kind of cool being up here. I mean, Jordan's sitting on the beam we installed and your feet are on the joist hangers. Right. And your feet are on the joist supported by the joist hangers. So we're both being supported by our work. So you got to do a good job, right? All right, so this metal box is supposed to be bonded to the ground. What do you think? Did they do it? I'm going to say they did. All right, and they actually put connectors here for the cables. So maybe they did. Let's check it out. 
And no, they did not. Oh, man. Yep. That's what you said. Yep. So I think just to make this easy, we're going to get rid of this metal box, terminate this wire in a plastic box. That way, they're all the same. So why don't I just cut this one? We have plenty of wire right here. And we'll demo all that. We can pull that out from downstairs. Let me pull this box up. And we're done. We're done with that. I'm just going to drop it. All right. Now, let's terminate this. How about on this king stud right here? Or right here? Um, I like the king stud. You like that? Yeah, because um, think about if you were working up here, you wouldn't want to be ranging down. You'd mm -hmm. want to be as... As high as we could. Yeah, absolutely. So this is circuit six, like we said. My plan is for the electrician to tie into here for the small appliance circuits on the counter on this side of the kitchen. So let's just strip this back, put a couple of wire nuts on it, nail that to the king stud, and we'll be done with this one. We got a cover plate. Make sure I don't drop the screws. Cool. Doesn't take long at all. Why don't we do this other one while we're right here? All right, gang, while we're up here, we're just going to go ahead and do this one. We're going to mount a box to this post we put in to support the roof. And uh, I do have a non contact voltage indicator. This is by Klein. And let's check it out. So that one's hot, but the two we're working on, we already turned off. They're off at the panel, so I know I'm safe. Let's just cut them apart. And this is a 15 amp circuit. This is a lighting circuit. So this will be perfect for our new dining room lights or our kitchen lights. This one that goes behind Jordan, I'm gonna leave it as long as I can. That way I can route this wire around the perimeter of the room instead of cutting across the top of the joist. And this one, I think I'll just cut it here. Again, like we said, always leave them as long as you can. Then when I strip something like this, I just use the utility knife as a gauge. That's how long I strip it. The length of the knife works well for me. What I do, I lightly score it here. And then when I get to the end, I press a little harder so that the sheathing comes apart like that. And then I just tear it. That way I'm not cutting all the way through here. I'm just scoring the sheathing and then I'll just pull off. Just like that and remove the paper from the ground. Sometimes that takes longer than doing the, the sheathing. There's so much paper on here. All right, there we go. Put them in our box. So you'll notice both cables went through one hole. That's okay. You can do two through one, or if you're not comfortable with that, just put one here and one here. Or you can go here and here. However your wires are routed. The other nice thing about these strippers, they're made for Romex. So I only have a stripper for 14, number 14 wire and a stripper for number 12 wire. I don't have like six different holes and I gotta figure out which is the right one. There's just two. It makes it easy on my old eyes. <laughs> All right, let's make up the grounds and the neutrals and the hots. Fold them back into the box. And remember, our electrician's gonna be back. And he's gonna be working in there. So let's put the cover plate on there and go do that next one, bud. All right, I'm down from the attic, and if you look up here, you can see one, two, three junction boxes that are labeled and ready for our electrician to tie all his new stuff into. Now this one right above me, it's labeled 14A. Those two wires going into that box used to come straight down to that old two gang box that was right here on this wall where this stud pack is. Then we demoed it, mounted it here so the owners could still control the lights. But now it's all gone. So that box had four wires coming into it. We had it 120 volts in, and we had 120 volts out down to the next switch in the dining room. 
And those two are made up up there, like we said. The other two wires that were in the box, this is one of them. It's a 14-3, and it's for the three-way switch that was in this box. And the fourth wire was a 14-2, and it fed that beautiful fluorescent light up here in the popcorn ceiling. We already pulled it out. That's the remains of that circuit. Goes in the trash. All that's left in the demolition phase of this circuit is this old three-way switch. It's for the fan that was over the breakfast area. With our new layout, we don't need two switches. We're just gonna have one right here in this beautiful 45 degree corner wall. So we just have to get rid of this circuit. It comes down here into the old three-way box that was on this wall where the pocket door now is. And this is the switch leg that goes up and over to right here. So we're gonna cut these two, pull them up through the top plate, and then this circuit is demoed. All right, gang, I've cut off both of the boxes that these were attached to. These two wires are getting demoed. This wire fed the old fan, and this 14-3 is this one right here from our old box. All I need to do, go in the attic, pull the staples, and pull all this out. Now I'm left with these two. It was the three-way switch for the laundry, which we don't need anymore. We're just gonna have a single pole switch in the laundry, so I'm gonna terminate these in the attic, in a junction box, and convert the three-way switches into a single pole. So let's head up there and do that. Here's the two wires we're gonna demo. I should just be able to pull them out. There we go. So there's that one. It looks like it's just gonna fall, Jordan. Yeah, down into the pantry? Yep, almost. And then this one goes over here to the old fan location. There we go. We'll just pull that out when we go downstairs. Maybe I can, there, there we go, easy. All right, all that's left is that laundry room three-way light circuit. There's our 14-3, there's our 14-2. We're just gonna make that up. We'll cap off the red traveler on each end and use the black wires, basically turning that location into a single pole switch. <clears throat> let's just find a spot for this, Jordan, maybe all over right. here. Sure. So the reason that it's called a 14-3 is because it has three conductors inside of it. Correct. And the extra one is that red wire. Correct. The red wire is what allows it to be a three-way switch. That's right. So you're just going to put a cap on both of them, making it obsolete, turning it into a regular Romex, like a 14-2, what we've been using this whole time. Yep. I'm going to cap each end of the red. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say 14-3, that means three conductors and they don't count the ground. So there's actually four wires in there. Sure. Three with insulation. The ground does not have insulation, so it's called a 14-3. Right. In a 14-2, you have two insulated conductors, the black and the white, and the ground is the third uninsulated wire. They go under this strong back, huh? Right there. Yep. Why don't we just make it up on this strong back, like right here? Sure. All right, gang, let's make up this junction box real quick, just like we've been doing, and I've already got the cover plate ready to go. All right, gang, this is what it looks like, just like all the other boxes. The only exception is this red wire. That's one of the travelers. We just capped it off here. So I actually already capped off the other end of the red. So we're gonna put all this back in the box, put our cover on it, turn the circuit back on, and this side is done. So that's what it looks like all cleaned up with all those switches gone that used to be in this wall right here. Remember the laundry room light was controlled by two three-way switches here and here. We just need the one, so we turned it into a single pole. And then the other switch that was here was for the breakfast area but we'll have a nice new one right here. So we didn't feel like we needed that. And we couldn't put one here anyway because of the pocket door and all the cabinets. So all this work took the better part of about three days. Now we filled this trash can twice with old wire and boxes that came out of the attic and out of this kitchen. And remember at the beginning of the video, I said there are 15 junction boxes in the attic. Why don't we head up there and take a look at them and we'll show you what we did. All right, gang, we're up in the attic and I'm gonna show you just three boxes that we did what it looks like it's these three right here dang did you set those with a laser um no i didn't <laughs> it looks like it though doesn't it a little it? bit yep but i put them up here it makes it easier for the electrician that way they're not kneeling down in the insulation just trying to think ahead and make it easy on them so i've got 10a terminated there 12a terminated there 220 amp circuits and 16b is still feeding the refrigerator so some of them are ready to go and some of them actually won't be used anymore. For example, 16B, that is the storeroom lights off the carport and the plugs out there. 
and it was also the small appliance counter circuit over here. So they're gonna disconnect the refrigerator and we'll, this circuit will terminate right there. So there's three of them. There's three more over here to my left, your right, way over there, circuit 10A, a couple more here. And these are receptacle circuits, lighting circuits. But the point is the electricians can come up here and start running wire. I'm gonna actually have a list for them. From 12A, do this. From 10A, do that. Go to here, go to there. They love it that way. We can just go down the list, check each item off, and at the end of the day, the list is complete. I know we haven't missed anything. It's a good way to do it. All right, gang, it was cool showing you everything in the attic. Super excited that all that is done. We're back downstairs, and you can see all our receptacles or all our boxes are ready to go for our electrician. Over here, we used an adjustable depth box. This is what it looks like. A lot of people never heard of them before. Available at Home Depot or Lowe's. And check it out. You can zip it in or out, depending on the thickness of your backsplash. So we'll have counters here, some kind of tile, and over there as well. So we're gonna wrap up this video. So make sure you get that ground wire. Hook it up to your like button first for safety, then the neutral, and then the hot. 120 volts in the US, 230 everywhere else, I guess. Make sure you don't burn up your monitor. Leave us a comment, ask a question down below. We'll try to answer it for you. And subscribe if you haven't already. That would mean the world to us, and we will see you on the next one. So I'm gonna just cut those. Crap. You good? I'm good. I'm safe. <laughs> now what? <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs>